Well, good morning and happy Tuesday, August 11th, 2020. I hope your Monday was was great. Uh, I had a wonderful Monday, so I hope you had one as well. Today, we are going to talk about waiting in faith. And you go, oh my God, waiting, uh, that's a horrible word. We don't want to wait these days, right? <laughs> We're living in a world of instant gratification and quick fix. Well, we don't want to wait. But uh, we're in Hebrews, and, and Hebrews is really a, a book about perseverance and faith and uh, hanging in there. And again, we're not a society much on hanging in there, right? I mean, we want it right now. Uh, we, you know, we're, we're at 50% uh, divorce rate. So, you know, if the marriage ain't working, we can just get a divorce, right? I mean, it, there's, there's so many things that we just... Uh, if we don't, if we don't like somebody, we just unfriend them, right? So it's it's it, it this world we're not we're not really working and persevering and, and trying to get through things. We just want things easy, but easy isn't it, the easy button isn't the way to go with faith. So we're going to go through that a little bit in Hebrews. Uh, now this is a letter to the Hebrews, but it's likely not from Paul uh, because the, uh, the, just the wording is different. The style is different. So, so maybe Luke, uh, maybe Barnabas, uh, uh, I, you know, maybe Apollos. There's a few that could have, could have written this to the Hebrews, but it likely wasn't Paul, but it starts out with the uh, verse six and without faith, it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Now, we're going to go through that verse a little bit uh, deeper here in a little bit because it, the wording is kind of funny. But by faith, Noah, being warned by God about things not yet seen, in reverence prepared an ark for salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, Obey by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. And by faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking for the city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even Sarah herself received the ability to conceive, even well beyond the proper time of life, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, there was born even of one man, and him as good as dead at that, as many descendants as in the stars of heaven in number, and innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. All these died in faith without receiving the promises, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on earth. For those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own. And indeed, if they had been thinking of that country from which they went out, they would have had the opportunity to return. Was that as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And let's go into to that verse six uh, uh, when we uh, first started here, because it, it's kind of worded funny because it says, without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who becomes to God must believe that he is. And what that means is faith is necessary to please God. But first of all, you to serve him, you, you got to believe that uh, and be convinced that he exists. So uh, first of all, you have to believe that God really does exist. And furthermore, you got to believe that his plans for us are good and, and acceptable and perfect. And that's in Romans 12 too as well. But we must trust in the Lord enough to walk in the center of his will. Now, not to the left and not to the right. Now, we want to walk in the center of his will. Even if his commands seem unreasonable, impossible, or don't make any sense to us. Like the biblical heroes of old, we bring even the smallest decisions to him, knowing he will lead us in the best way. And once again, I've, I've always talked about you know, having your own personal board of directors. And if you're going to have a, a, 
uh, ahead of the board. God's a pretty good one to be at the head of the board. So, uh, you know, go to the throne and uh, uh, with boldness and, and make your request and, and, and your acclamations. Don't, don't, don't be shy about that. That's what God is there for. Uh, and we start the devotion out today. Uh, really, I think from Charles Fanley's talking here, he says, when I was a young boy, my mother let me plant some seeds in her garden. Although she explained that the plants would take time to appear, when nothing happened after several days, I decided to dig them up to check for progress. I found no plants, but what's worse, I also ruined the possibility of ever seeing any. So, and that happens in our lives, uh, right? We go out and, and we don't see progress. And so we start digging around and digging around and digging around. And what we end up doing is ruining um, the possibility of anything ever growing or, 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 or flourishing. But Hebrew 11 records examples of people who by faith waited for what God promised, even when it wasn't visible. And of course, the big one is Noah. Everybody thought he was crazy because he continued to build this ark out in this just dry, desolate area, right? Despite many intervening years until the predicted flood happened, right? And Abraham looked forward to the land of God promised through the fulfillment, uh, though the fulfillment did not take, take place during his lifetime. And Sarah had to wait until she was well beyond childbearing age before God finally gave her the son he had promised her. And if we expect God to work according to our timetable, we're likely to face disappointment. The people mentioned in Hebrews had to wait many years. In fact, some of the promises made to them won't be fulfilled until after Christ returns. The Lord doesn't work like a gumball machine. We can't cash in a promise and assume the fulfillment will pop out. Ours is a long-term walk by faith. So you know, we're in it for the long haul, folks. And, and again, a lot of times, oh, my God, I, wish, I don't know why God didn't give me that. I asked him for that. He didn't give me that. And then, then you look back maybe 10 years and you go, Lord, boy, I'm really, I see now. I understand why you didn't. If you'd give me that, man, things would have been really rough. So, so we, we have those in our life. Just got to look back on those and remind yourself that, that God is in control, right? God knows what's going on and knows what's best in your life. Um, he, he knows your thoughts anyway, but he wants you to come uh, with your prayers petition because he, he wants that conversation. So just because you can say, oh, God knows what I want, what I need to pray for. Well, he wants that, uh, that relationship with you. Okay, well, Bible in one year. Jeremiah 9 through 11, we are, we are rocking through it right now. We've only got, uh, I think it was 52 or 53 chapters in Jeremiah. So just keep rolling in there and keep guiding. Keep your Bible in one year. Keep that string going. Uh, before you know it, you'll be through it, and, uh, and you'll be glad for it because you'll, you'll be able to really uh, be able to, to know what's in there, be able to react uh, properly in your life because you'll know what the Word is telling you to do. Well, all right. Well, have a great Tuesday, and I will see you on that thing called Hump Day tomorrow. Have a great one.